Melinda. Melinda Tankard Rice. She is an author, speaker, media commentator, blogger, and advocate of young people. She is best known for her work addressing sexualization, objectification, harms of pornography, sexual exploitation, trafficking, and violence against women. Melinda is an author, editor of six books, including Getting Real, uh, published by Spin Effex, uh, Big Porn. And uh, these are some of her uh, really important books and prostitution narratives. Uh, Melinda is a co founder of Grassroots Campaigning Movement, which is called uh, Collective Shout for a World Free of Sexploitation and exposing corporations, advertising, and marketings who objectify women and sexualize girls to sell products and services. Uh, an ambassador for the World Vision Australia, Compassion Australia, Harbour New, New Zealand, and Youth Mentoring Body. Uh, the Rays Foundation. Melinda is also senior lecturer in the C Center for Culture and Ethics, Notre Dame University uh, in Sydney. And she's named in the Who's Who of Australian Women and the World's Who of Women. And uh, yeah, uh, apart from that, she's uh, yeah she she's a crusader of <laughs> women's rights. So we uh, uh, give the floor to Melinda, please. Melinda, looking forward to hearing. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you all today. I so admire what you're doing and I was profoundly affected by Monica's presentation. I've been to India many times. It's a place very close to my heart. And uh, as you were speaking, I could picture those, um, those waste pickers, you know, the waste collectors. Uh, I could still see them from my, my previous visits and how hard they work. I was quite moved by your presentation actually. Um, so the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown has, has brought to the fore the differential impact of global disasters on women and their increased vulnerability. It has also exacerbated the pre-existing vulnerabilities of women and girls. I want to focus on how the sex and the porn industries have capitalised on this virus and I, then I want to have a look at the rise of predators uh, soliciting young girls on popular social media platforms such as Instagram, which acts as a virtual auction block for girls. The pandemic has uh, been disastrous, of course, for the poor and marginalised, especially prostituted women around the world. Melissa Farley, the researcher and sex industry critic, wrote a recent article Prostitution, the Sex Trade, and the COVID-19 Pandemic, which you can find on her Prostitution Research and Education website. And I'll be uh, quoting significantly from uh, Melissa Farley's paper. She says, the pandemic has had immediate and severe impacts on women in the sex trade who are already among the most vulnerable women on the planet because of quarantines, social distancing, government's neglect of the poor, systemic racism in all walks of life, including health care, failure to protect children from abuse, and the predation of sex buyers and pimps. The coronavirus pandemic threatens already marginalised women's ability to survive. Women in the trade are in harm's way for many reasons, including a lack of food, shelter and health care, all of which increase their risk of contracting the virus. An Indian woman in prostitution said, poverty will kill us before the coronavirus. A woman in the US said, you might survive the virus, but you won't survive not eating for two months. If you ask any rational person if they'd rather take the virus or not eat, that's not even a thought. Another woman in the industry said, anytime there's this type of panic, clients understand that as a shift in power, for women with no alternative, some clients try to take advantage of that. They will push for lower prices for not having to screen. They will push for unsafe work practices and push the, your personal boundaries because they know that the women are desperate. During this COVID period, we've seen new ways of recruiting women into uh, the virtual versions of the sex industry. We've seen a rise of cyber prostitution practices which are attracting more attention, a chatterbait, strip chat, advertising of virtual girlfriends, 
$20 Instagram lap dances, topless food delivery being promoted. Only fans, subscriber only content has grown in popularity. Only fans is routinely promoted in our mainstream media here in Australia. Uh, News.com describes only fans as a great way for cash strapped women to make some quick money. And here in Australia, we've been asking, uh, is this news service uh, in some kind of commercial arrangement? Because we've collected so many articles where they are uh, promoting these kind of platforms for women to uh, sell their bodies essentially online. Tragically, there have been more reports of pay-per-view torture, the live rape and abuse of children, uh, many from the Philippines, and a, a ring of Australian men was recently uh, busted as uh, commissioning the live streaming of sexual abuse of uh, children. Uh, children are at even greater risk with uh, many more at home, not able to go to school, and with families being even more impoverished because of COVID-19, uh, their children are at, at particular risk from uh, predatory, predatory men, especially in uh, Western countries and, and Australia. Pro-sex pro trade groups encouraged women to keep prostituting themselves, even though the sex trade was supposed to be closed down. In Australia, Scarlet Alliance, like many other prostitution organisations, encouraged women to go online to webcam during the pandemic, rather than encouraging them to apply for Job Seeker, the economic support measures for which they were eligible. Instead, they launched a fund to tide women over until business was back uh, to normal, rather than uh, encouraging them to pursue a safer line of employment. It published a red book, which was a set of guidelines on how to reduce risk of transmission and these suggestions uh, included, well, they really acknowledged the disempowerment and financial vulnerability by, uh, by being unable to stop servicing men. It advised, if possible, do not see clients who have any of the following symptoms, cough, fever, headache, runny nose, and suggest to somehow avoid close contact by keeping face-to-face -face activity under 15 minutes and even suggested that um, you engage with nurse and doctor fantasies to incorporate hygiene precautions. I want to turn now to um, Pornhub. Can I just check that I'm still being recorded? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, there's a sign. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm just checking because I there's a different screen now. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, Pornhub, uh, biggest porn hosting platform in the world. Now, this platform from late February to March 17 this year had an increase of porn use in multiple countries with global traffic increasing over 11%. Now, some of these increases were attributed to making its premium services free to countries in lockdown as though it was performing a wonderful community service for all these poor men, you know, stuck at home offering free premium content. There was 57%, 38% and 61% increases in Italy, France and Spain respectively, each occurring a day after the free services were offered. Uh, but there wasn't just an increase where the free services were offered. Countries without free premium access also reported increase in consumption of porn in the range of 4% up to 24%. Now we have to ask, is there nothing that the sex industry won't turn into pornography? Pornography searches using the terms coronavirus, corona and COVID reached more than 9.1 million searches. Capitalizing on a global pandemic, which has already killed thousands of people, Pornhub created porn featuring COVID-19 pandemic themes. Pornhub leapt at the opportunity to market racist COVID uploads. Melissa Farley says that in March alone, there were at least 115 racist COVID-19 updates to Pornhub uh, with an anti-Asian theme. 
So Asians as a carrying disease infected, uh, but still, you know, eroticized and fetishized as um, compliant and hypersexual. To make itself self appear more humane while doing all of that, Pornhub became involved in the distribution of masks and promoted hand washing. But it could not wash its hands of the trafficking, rape, incest and child abuse content, the eroticization of racism and perpetuating of racist stereotypes all over its website. It could not wash away the fact that it was essentially a global crime scene. And uh, my, we at Collective Shout have been part of a global campaign against Pornhub, which now has more than 1 million signatures calling for an investigation uh, into, into the rape, the trafficking, the exploitation uh, that is inherent in Pornhub, which is owned by MindGeek, which is based in Canada. And uh, we've been uh, utilizing uh, the attention given to Black Lives Matters protests to say, you know, if you care about racism, have a look at the hate factory, have a look at this monument of spewing hatred uh, about minority groups, which is what Pornhub does. So how about pulling down that monument to racism, you know? Um, I want to now look finally at Instagram. Now, Instagram, through its predator-friendly policies and practices, has fostered a community that fetishizes underage girls and helps fuel a culture that normalizes their sexualization and harassment. Predators took advantage of the large supply of young girls being online during lockdown. And Instagram effectively serves as a pedophile directory, a magnet for predators and pedophiles. We have reported multiple examples of child exploitation material on Instagram. So we're not even talking about Pornhub, we're talking about um, one of the most popular social media platforms in the world uh, for children. And yet, you know, it's really acting in, in similar ways in allowing predators to prey on girls, to post pornified comments on uh, the girls' pages, to invite them to private chats, um, to gather, predators gathering together to talk about the girls, they capture their images, they send them to designated uh, websites. And these girls are, are underage. We have even uh, captured uh, men, naked men, live masturbating to girls during their live chats. A lot of parents have no idea that this is what's happening on, on Instagram. And uh, I have a team of um, four women and uh, we are reporting these accounts around the clock, but often uh, they're not even seen in violation of uh, Instagram standards, even though we are actually reporting uh, what we believe is, is criminal uh, activity. Uh, so we have campaigns called Wake Up Instagram and Instagram Pimps Girls. If you want to know more about those campaigns, you can look for those, for those hashtags. Instead of safeguarding children, Instagram is bringing child predators into, into their homes. Uh, we are part of a global campaign with the National Centre on Sexual Exploitation in the US and Defend Dignity in Canada to hold Instagram and Facebook executives accountable for exploitation and predation of underage girls. Uh, it's been reported uh, during COVID, um, a rise of online grooming, 55% increase in online grooming on Facebook owned platforms with the record number happening on Instagram. In a timely report, the UN Special Rapporteur on the sale and sexual exploitation of children highlighted some of the dangers of social media that we have been calling Instagram's corporate leaders to address. Quote, offenders, traffickers and criminal groups use internet tools such as social media to identify child victims more easily and establish relationships, subsequently intimidating them into exploitive situations. Instagram must work to eradicate its child predator community and to foster a culture in which sexualization, harassment, exploitation and abuse of children is unthinkable.
thanks very much for uh, allowing me to be part of uh, this really important webinar today. Thank you, thank you, uh, Melinda. We are having from one gripping uh, presentation to another today. <laughs> so <laughs> it's fantastic. Thank you so much thank for you. your work and uh, for the presentation today. Thank you, um, Sheila, for yours as well. Uh, Christine, 